What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is Friday, finally Friday out here, July 7th, 2023. It's about 11.39, or 11.29, excuse me, a.m. here along the West Coast. Latest activity looks like some movement up into the uh, Washington area. Also notice quite a bit of movement into the Southern California area. I'm not for sure why these uh, microquakes were on the globe. I, I think I maybe accidentally hit them. I don't want that many on the map. Either way, uh, here is the latest map here on the USGS site uh, showing Southern California lighten up here slightly. So let's see what we have going on here. Uh, the San Jacinto Fault Zone, of course, is going to be the segment uh, that extends here on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. Uh, that area looks like it's swarming slightly, but that's not unusual. Uh, that's a very typical uh, pattern that we see there across that fault system. Uh, did have a 1.2 in the last hour. Also, um, looks like a 1.1 and some movement over here near the San Bernardino Mountains. That's on the North American side of the plate boundary. So, got a little bit of activity here kicking up on the uh, Pacific side and movement on the opposite side of the plate. So, watch Southern California here. Could be looking at maybe seeing some uh, elevated activity stirring up uh, throughout the day today. Definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, over here around the uh, San Luis Obispo area, got uh, a couple smaller quakes, including a 2.4 earlier this morning. This is just off the San Simeon um, fault system here. Pretty lengthy fault, uh, runs into the oceanic fault zone. Uh, that area is very capable of seeing a large earthquake. Um, don't remember the last time we've seen something down there, but uh, showing a little bit of activity today. Uh, also over here around the Long Valley Super Volcano, had a 2.4 yesterday uh, and a couple other smaller quakes here out in the volcanic table lens area uh, further up north of course long or the um, excuse me clear lake volcanic field this is going to be the calpine hydrothermal operations here around cobb mountain in full swing it looks like today also northern california here the southern end of the cascadia still showing some movement um, I don't remember if we checked uh, trimmer map last night. Let me double check here and see. Uh, yesterday's trimmer event did show some movement there in uh, southern Oregon. Uh, that is associated with the, uh, the current activity we're seeing. The southern end of the Cascadia looks like that is applying some stress down here uh, in the region. Now we're not getting a lot of trimmer activity due east here. Uh, it is mostly up here, but that is adding some strain further upstream so we're not slipping down here but we're definitely uh definitely got a couple smaller earthquakes it's been somewhat active here over the last week uh, far as the accumulation here of these earthquakes uh, let me show you guys here seven days all magnitudes um i wonder if it's been past a week or so i don't want to throw up a whole bunch of numbers uh there's the last 30 days of activity about 67 earthquakes there on the map, but over the last week, we got about 15 uh, specifically in this area. And all of this uh, has to do with what's going on uh, there along the Cascadia. These are somewhat deeper earthquakes into the subduction zone, but above the tremor level. Tremor level occurs much further uh, to the right on the map, but deeper, around 45 kilometers or so. And then of course it subducts further and you get all the volcanoes and whatnot. Not gonna go into that whole story or, or that whole picture, I should say. But either way, activity somewhat elevated. Uh, and that includes today as well. So we'll just continue to watch that. Uh, Northern California area for some possible movement uh, into Washington and Oregon. A couple smaller quakes here, nothing big. Looks like a 2.6 up here in the Strait of Juan de Fuca. That uh, area has been seeing a little bit of trimmer activity as well, just to the north of this current activity. Uh, but it looks like a little bit of strain going on up here 45 kilometers deep notice that that's right around where the uh the trimmer is all right uh further to the east got uh texas lighting up slightly out here with a five or 3.3 it was gonna five i was gonna say 5.3 but 3.3 outside of pecos texas out in the oil fields oklahoma a little bit of movement up here outside the enid area north of okc Mostly smaller microquakes, uh, and it looks like there's a few of them though, near the Dover, Oklahoma area. A little separate swarm out there. New Madrid seismic zone, fairly quiet. Puerto Rico area, uh, getting a little bit of movement, uh, of course, across a broad area here of the Puerto Rico 
uh, mainland region, we did see a 4.9 into the Port of Spain area. Uh, that earthquake coming in uh, a couple hours ago, 84 kilometers deep. 4.9 shaking things up out here. Continue to watch this region potentially for some further movement. South America, smaller earthquakes here on the map. It looks like fours, some deep, some shallow. That's the way it's been here across the South America region here over the past few months. Just a bunch of fours kicking up, some deep and some shallow. So it's continuing today. Alaska area, mostly smaller microquakes. A little bit of movement here across the Anchorage area, but uh, nothing big to chat about there today. Over here around the um, Japan region, 4.2, that was from last night. Uh, looks like most of these here from last night. Not really seeing anything new pop up here. Uh, the Philippine plates, fairly quiet in terms of 4.0 and above, 4.1 and above. Um, EMSC, I don't know what's going on with it. I still can't access it on the globe. I'm going to have to figure it out. But um, for now, we'll just use the USGS uh, earthquake information on here. But there's, I'm sure there's some activity occurring up here in the smaller department. Just the USGS is not picking up on it. All right, uh, further south, looks like a 5.0 into the Tonga area. Did see some deeper movement quakes here uh, yesterday. That's adding some further strain back up here along the um, plate boundary itself. Notice these two earthquakes super deep yesterday. Uh, and then that's followed up here by um, some shallower surface earthquake activity. New Zealand uh, doesn't look like they're showing nothing there on the map. Let's see what we got for the GeoNet server. Stand by here for a quick second. Two days ago, there's that 4.6. All magnitudes map here will bring up the microquake activity as well. Mostly twos. I'm not really seeing anything big in the last few hours. Um, this area, it's still... Um, I still think it needs to play catch up here in terms of all the uh, movement going on around this area over the past, oh, I'd say past few weeks or so. It just really hasn't caught up. Uh, yeah, we had a four or so, a couple threes, but I think we're definitely overdue for something a little bit on the larger side here across New Zealand. Uh, the earthquake drums here not looking super active today. No major swarms there across the area. Again, just a couple smaller microquakes as listed on the previous map. Big Island of Hawaii, got uh, Pahala lighting up and a little bit of movement outside uh, the Hilo area. 2.6, 46 kilometers deep. This is uh, associated with the uh, Pacific plate underneath here, way underneath. Nothing changing there across the Kilauea volcano or Mauna Loa for now. Uh, the latest notification statements here from the volcano service um, looks like, well, let's go check out HVO. Not a whole lot. Doesn't look like we're looking at any uh, major updates or changes there uh, for the area. Of course, all volcanoes in the Cascade Range at normal. And uh, Yellowstone is normal as well. Uh, the latest informational statement here shows that uh, had a, a small amount of earthquake activity. Very small. Only 78 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park region. Uh, magnitude 2.8 was the uh, largest in that little sequence of swarming. But overall, uh, things have been very quiet there across Yellowstone. Uh, during the month of June, continuous GPS stations in Yellowstone Caldera recorded a pause in long-term ground subsidence, which has been ongoing since about 2015. A small amount of seasonal uplift, which is due to the, uh, uh, the snow, the snow melt and the runoff right from the rain, and uh, that kind of goes into the surface, percolates into the surface, causing the ground to swell like a sponge. It's very typical. It's got to do something, right? Not going to evaporate completely into the air. Uh, so that is a style, a seasonal style of deformation that occurs each summer after all the snow melt. Uh, the latest informational or the latest map here showing the uh, Yellowstone seismographs here. Very calm. Uh, very, very calm. Now this activity over here guessing that's probably from uh, some thunderstorm activity last night that did show up here across uh, a good portion of the park sometimes wind does that uh, but this is not any type of 
magma movement stirring up underneath the ground. You know, if that was the case, we would see unbelievable swelling, um, you know, ground deformation rates off the charts. Thunderstorm activity will do that. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Speaking of uh, the weather here real quick, look at this. Looks like uh, some further thunderstorm activity up here around Yellowstone National Park. Main threat today across portions of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Colorado with a slight chance for tornadoes there. 2% chance. Main threat today looks like it's going to be some damaging wind gusts. Those are the straight line winds or outflow winds from the thunderstorms. Uh, so if you're out there in that area today, um, you know, it is Friday. Keep your car uh, in a safe location. And, uh, you know, with some of that hail threat out there as well, some of those hail stones could get uh, two inch in diameter or larger uh, within these regions. So just keep an eye on the sky today. Space weather activity. We did have a uh, M flare peak up. Pretty nice one. Um, well, that was yesterday, but still, uh, it did kind of peak up there. M4.0 from 3359. Now that is this massive sunspot down here that we've been watching it. Uh, and this is one I kind of mentioned here uh, last night in the past couple days to keep an eye on it. It did peak out a little flare. Uh, the other sunspot, 3354, the source of the X flare last week, is long gone, no longer visible here. Let's look at the most recent map of the structures of the sunspots. This one down here still har harbors some potential for some further flaring. Um, also, there is that giant one over here on the southwestern limb, or, or southeastern limb. We're just getting a visual of it. Notice that very complex, deep colors within that core. That's 3363. We're going to have to keep an eye on. Uh, that is currently, uh, well, it shows here an alpha um, magnetic structure. But we'll watch this, though. Uh, for some uh, mixing there of the uh, polarities of the of that sunspot the UV filter ray here will probably show that bright you can see that little bright feature down here pretty nice look at that what is that little error I guess I don't know it's a neat little neat little signature whatever it is uh, either way we'll watch the sunspot and uh, continue to watch a couple of these that are currently facing earth here uh, for some further flaring I don't believe we had any CMEs produced from that M flare. Uh, let's see here. It doesn't mention anything about it. It doesn't look like we're seeing any major elevated potential here over the next couple days. It looks like, you know, G1 class storm, maybe. That was, uh, well, that was last night. It looks like it peaked out a little bit around three or four, but. Overall, uh, space weather activity far as the auroras go are fairly quiet. Hopefully we can get that to change here in the coming days. Uh, no major coronal holes have uh, developed, at least not facing us. We will watch number 23, see if that continues to stay center disk of the sun. That would be geo-effective, uh, pending that continues to hold uh, for that coronal hole number 23. All right, guys. Friday, it's Friday. Woohoo! Stay safe out there. Make sure you guys, um, you know, just have a safe weekend. It's been a little while since we've seen any uh, any larger scale event here in earthquake activity. Still watching the Iceland region up here. It looks like that activity has come to a halt as of uh, yesterday, but there's still, obviously, there's still probably some smaller quake activity going on there. Um, across the region uh, let's see I think that's about it alrighty have a safe day we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight take care folks